I'm here in London, England with Barry Birch, our World War II tour director. So Barry, how has this adventure differed from the other jobs that you have done in the past? Um, every tour has its own character and every tour has its own little blips and things that go wrong and every tour has its successes and failures. So this particular tour, I think the uh, sort of knowledge bits and the, the bits where we've um, been engaging with the war history and going to the sites and seeing all that, I think that's gone pretty well mm -hmm. uh, for me. Uh, it was good and I, and I felt that um, everybody on the tour, adults and youngsters, engaged with that. And I think we've had some very moving moments that hopefully will stay with people for, forever. Um, in terms of the special character of this trip, obviously you took on board to come and continue the trip as the coronavirus has started to spread and spread and spread so to the point that um, in the last three days of our trip, the, the, the Paris part of it has been disrupted. Mm -hmm. So um, um, I think we've all been surprised at the growth of the virus and we've all been surprised at how countries have started to make decisions to protect their fellow citizens. While we've been here, the US has heard Mr. Trump say that he's gonna close his uh, ports, his ports of entry to many European countries. And we got caught by that, didn't we? Uh, in Paris, we'd only arrived um, a short few hours and we're starting to get on with our trip and we were right in the center of Paris having a great time when suddenly we're told we've got to get back and try and get to the airport. We tried to do that and we got to the airport with 50 minutes to go and it wasn't good enough. And, uh, you know, that was a real bad low moment because everybody was crestfallen, everybody was deflated. At that point, you guys all wanted to go home and you couldn't. Um, but uh, I'd like to think that my company had a contingency plan to uh, still get you back to the hotel. We hadn't lost the booking in the hotel. The hotel pretty much looked after us and we got out the next day and overnight, EF managed to relocate us on the Eurostar on a Friday, you know, the beginning of the weekend when everybody's gonna be traveling. Often Parisians and French people jump on the Eurostar to come to London for the weekend. So normally the Eurostar's booked out. Somehow EF got us on the bus, on the on the train, sorry, and we we pitched up. We managed to get a bus to pick us up and we ended up rescuing a couple of nice hours buying stuff and having a nice time in lovely Camden Town. So you know, is it a disaster? I, I don't think so. I think I think travel is a attitude of mind. For me, travel isn't about the destination; it's about the journey. And if the journey includes a few hiccups on the way, I think those are the bits that um, we'll find interesting. Because when you go back home now, you're going to talk about how we overcome this, and you know the uncertainty you felt and what was going on in your head, but we're here, we're all safe, and it looks like you're gonna get on your plane, and this time tomorrow, you'll be having a cup of coffee, or having Taco Bell somewhere. Yes. <laughs> now, you touched on how the coronavirus affected our group and whatnot, but what I really wanna know is what was how did the virus specifically affect your job? Oh yeah, okay. So um, knowing how sensitive you uh, Americans were as travelers, you know, your parents had entrusted uh, their uh, children to the group leader and other adults and to me, you know, and uh, it's a big responsibility. So you wouldn't want a guy to turn up to lead you who's, um, who's got the virus himself. So uh, I had to do a declaration 
F4EF for you guys to say that I hadn't travelled to particularly affected areas like Italy. Uh, and EF very quickly closed down all of their tours to Italy and any tours that were going to Italy rerouted them. So I think the company did what they could to reassure people that we were taking it seriously and not just blindly forcing travellers to go to diseased areas. I mean, I think what we're realising now, though, with seven days hindsight, is um, this is a virulent pandemic. It's going worldwide. It's everywhere now, and every in every country it's increasing. And um, the, the whole history of these kind of things is there's a massive rise for a short period of time, which is the moment we're in now, and then there's a peak and a plateauing out and then it will slowly die out. So that's what we're in. Um, you had the courage to come and travel uh, and uh, we've done our best to try and ameliorate the circumstances. I mean, I haven't been aware, have you, of us being around people who are coughing and spluttering and being sort of uh, not thinking. The thing is, with the way this virus is, you don't know, do you? We don't know where anybody that you're in, within a room of has, has had interactions and uh, all you can do is the best. You see, as a Brit who, whose family, families went through World War II, there's that phrase that you've seen, keep calm and... Carry on. That's it. <laughs> and what a great motto... motto to have for this virus you know you're gonna totally get paranoid and not go out and isolate yourself or you're gonna try and do the best but with a sensibility to do sensible things we're all washing our hands for 30 seconds we're all coughing into our handkerchiefs um, we're doing the best we can I think you said it better than most could everything being said what has been the highlight of this trip for you traveling with you guys um, you never know what the character of a group are going to be when I saw that you were from Loudoun Tennessee I went on Wikipedia and had a little look and I thought oh that's a nice little place uh, I wouldn't mind visiting that and tried to suss out you know and tried to find out little features you know and I found out that you had a link to UK because um, the, your founder, or your fort, was a, was English, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, so that was interesting. And I, I, you know, why do I do EF two? As I was, I'm a teacher. I was a teacher for 34 years, and I continue to do this kind of work because I enjoy the company of youngsters, and I've always enjoyed the company of Americans. You know, uh, and I don't say that in a patronising way. I just do, and I find that. Um, uh, Winston Churchill said we're two countries divided by a common language but that's kind of fun because we constantly uh, have a little bit of interest with each other mm -hmm. in, um, in talking, in listening to it, in our accents mm -hmm. and then in, uh, in hanging out with each other and, um, and interacting. You see, I firmly believe that we all as human beings have more that binds us together than tears us apart. And I think traveling like this and meeting each other uh, and chatting makes you realize that really. And there's one thing that's certain for me, that travel is broadening. It brought, not staying in your little place, never going anywhere, gives you a different sensibility on the world. Traveling, you realize that there's a beautiful world out there to explore. So I've enjoyed the trip because uh, I've got to say, all 21 of you on the trip, you've all got your own personalities, you've all got your own quirks. I'm quirky, aren't I? But we've had a laugh. We have. We've had a laugh and I, uh, I you know, I, honestly, I'll be a little bit sad to see you go. As will we. Thank you, Barry. Pleasure. Uh, keep being the lovely people you are and make sure that you take what you've processed and understood from this trip 
to make you a better person with a, a view on a contribution you're going to make to this world. Of course. Well, you guys heard it here first by the Barry Birch. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs>